This used to be a sandbox, and as I was deconstructing it, I thought it'd actually be a pretty good place to put a grill. So we're gonna try to convert this into a dry pour slab. So I kept the bottom boards of the sandbox, screwed them together, pounded them down, and leveled it to make my form. I'm planning on leaving those in place because I think it'll frame the concrete nicely and put a little expansion joint between the existing patio and the pad. Let's get to it. I'm going with this crack resistant mix by Quickrete. It says you don't have to use wire mesh or rebar, so I'm gonna test that out. We've got five bags. That's all I feel comfortable hauling in the back of my vehicle for weight restrictions. We're gonna pour it in there, see how much we need. I think I'll need about seven. But one of the nice things about this dry pour is we're not under severe time restrictions as long as it doesn't rain. We're good, so I'm gonna put it in there, roughly see where we're at and see if that seven is gonna do it. That wasn't ideal. My form is roughly four and a half feet by four and a half feet, two and a half to three inches deep, and I ended up using eight and a half 80 pound bags. Next, I picked out the straightest board I have and started screening the concrete. This is a bit of a challenge on a dry pour, not bringing the aggregate up to the surface, trying to get some of the more of the cement to the top. So it took me a little bit. Um, this is my first time attempting this, so moving around was a bit of a learning curve. But in the end, I got it done. A combination of screeding and tamping seemed to be the best solution to get that aggregate down into the mixture. It did occasionally run into having piles of it. You can see that I'm trying to move those around my hand to get a good mixture and to keep that angle get submerged. I did take this ninth bag and dig out some more of the cement from the bottom and, and kind of top dress with it a little bit to try to cover some of those areas that were low and or if a lot of aggregate was showing. After the top dressing, I re-screeded using my tamp screed method. After filling and screeding the entire form, I moved on to the edge tool here. This was a little bit easier to work with than the screed board um, and making sure that aggregate was pushed down into the mixture. Kind of fun, it was like working with sand a little bit, making a sand castle without too much water. After taking care of the edges, I got a wooden float and tried to evenly distribute around the mixture between the cement and the aggregate, try to get a, a more even mixture and, and again deal with those kind of pockets of aggregate. I'm not saying that this is the best solution, it's what I came up with. I, um, the results are okay, 
I made it work, but please put in the comments if you've got a better way to do this on a dry pour. To me, this is kind of the challenge with doing a dry pour. After the float, I used a paint roller to give the entire surface a uniform texture. And this is one thing that worked extremely well. I think it put a very nice texture and smoothed everything out. This is a, a awesome little trick. Now I was finally ready to put some water on the slab. Just have a standard garden hose attachment with a mist setting and use that first. The idea here is you're not using any powerful droplets or jets of water that are going to move the powder or mix around. We spent so much time trying to get it in the right shape with the right surface that if we blasted it with too much water it would uh, dig a hole in it or what have you. So just gently misted it to start with. Round two of misting. Of course it looks like there's rain on the way, so I got the kids slip and slide out and covered it with that to prevent any big rain droplets from wrecking our surface. Concrete is cured and we're ready for a grill. It's not perfect though. I did learn a few things that I'll do differently next time. Using the conventional pour method, you can agitate the solution and get the cream to come up to give you a nice layer on the top of your concrete. That's a little more difficult to do when it's dry and I had some trouble when I was finishing to get the aggregate to settle down. In this area, I did less raking, so the raking tends to bring that aggregate up and the cement mixture to fall down. And so I did less of that in this area and it turned out better. So next time I'll try to do less raking uh, for one, but I think also I'm going to get a bag of mortar mix, which is basically cement and sand, and get myself close everywhere, get the aggregate maybe quarter inch as close as I can below the surface, and top it with that mortar mix. So when I do the screeding, I won't have that aggregate popping up to the top. We can see some of it in here. Um, it's loose, some of it's embedded. For a grill pad, it probably doesn't really matter. But I think it would look better if it were all more like this across the street. I did not water this on any regimented schedule. I've got work, I've got other things going on. I did it over the weekend. Um, did what I could that day, but then I had to work the next day. Uh, I didn't get up in the middle of the night. Every 15 minutes, some people say every half hour. It's relatively cool out in spring in this region and damp. So it didn't dry out that quickly, we can see um, it's been a, about almost 24 hours since I last watered this and it's just drying out now. And it went well enough where I think I'm going to attempt it around the fire pit. Originally I designed that to put pavers down. I never got to it. Now it's grass and weeds growing in there. So I need to do something. So I think I'm going to do this dry pour. That'll be a little bit more challenging, but I'm going to do buy some of that mortar mix uh, for the top. The other thing is I spent a little bit more on this concrete mix to get the crack resistant. Basically, I think they add some sort of fibers to it. They claim you don't need a wire mesh or rebar in it. So if you noticed, I didn't add any of that. So we'll see how that lasts over time. The best way to do that is subscribe to my channel and I will provide update videos if anything changes on this. Also, you'll get to see me tackle the fire pit dry pour project next. Thanks for watching. Adios.